Welcome to Daz Geek. Today I want to talk about passwords. Now, this may seem like a very simple topic when it comes to some of the other more advanced topics we've been discussing in privacy and security, but after coming across an article talking about the top 200 most common passwords and seeing that in 2021, the most common password is still 123456. I think there's a lot of work we could do here. What we're gonna talk about is show you some solutions for your password management. I'm gonna talk about rules that you should use or think about when you're setting passwords. And then we're gonna, of course, take a look at these 200 common passwords to you know, have a good laugh. But also, if you're somebody who uses these, don't feel bad. The key here, fix it. Stop using these type of passwords, these simple passwords. This is one of the first steps into really having a more private and secure setup in your life is making sure that you're setting proper passwords. Because if you don't, there's a lot of brute force attacks and other things that will take advantage of you real quick. So let's start with taking a look at the top 200 most commonly used passwords, and then we'll look at some solutions for setting a good password. So shout out to NordPass here who produced this research. It's really interesting. Uh, they've been doing this every year, so you can actually go back and look at 2020's version and things and they talk about their methodology of how they compiled this uh, evaluated four terabyte database uh, independent research specializing in cybersecurity incidents that's how these passwords were compiled from and the research was classified in the various data elements and things like that but at the end of the day uh, you can look by country and other things but if you don't have any filters on and you just want to know what are the most commonly used passwords here again number one one, two, three, four, five, six. How long would it take a brute force tool, which essentially goes to a login page, simplified version of it, and it has a whole dictionary of words that it uses or attempts to pair together in numbers and attempts to brute force or keep trying passwords until one gets through. Well, in a time to crack a password of one, two, three, four, five, six is about less than one second. So it takes less than one second if you're using that as a password for a bank account, an email account, or something else to be able to get into that. Now, a lot of people will set passwords like this, very simple passwords, because they'll say, well, I don't really care about this service. But the thing is, you never really know what getting access into that service will tell somebody who's hacking you about other services and things that you're utilizing that may allow them to get further into your portfolio than that one tool or website where you set a simple password for. So my rule, never set a simple password, always make them complex. And I'm gonna show you how to do that super easy here. And then of course the next passwords one two three four five six seven eight nine and that of course takes less than a second too and then we have things like cordy password i mean that's really clever password is password uh you have various numbers of combinations of numbers one two three one two three and you could see this these are the most commonly used out of four terabytes things like football and princess and computer and these are just all of these take such little amount of time to actually crack. So if you're setting passwords like this, if you've set passwords like this, it's okay. Because now you can go in and you can fix it and you don't have to be embarrassed about it. And that's what this video is for, is really getting people to go in and fix it. Uh, number 200 was XXX. I mean, this is insane to me. With all of the information that's gone out there about password security and all of the hacks and breaches and things, that we have 103 million 170,552 passwords that were set to one two three four five six and by the way this is not just a situation where it's people's personal computers or personal accounts a lot of times this gets admins and professionals as well they think they're behind a firewall and they're safe so they just set really simple passwords and so as a business organization of course you should have rules that you follow for minimum types of passwords and having special characters and things which we'll get into in a minute. And then if we look at 2020, we haven't progressed much since 2020. The same kind of combinations of very simple passwords, the one, two, three, four, five, six, people love that uh, password combination or some variation of where they're just counting upwards. I guess they assume that that's just uh, really going to stump a hacker or something in there. But you can see it really hasn't changed a lot. A lot more love in there, it looks like just randomly looking at these. But there's some work that needs to be done. So how do you manage this? Well, you can use what's called a strong password generation tool. This is why I suggest Bitwarden. Now, Bitwarden is a sponsor of the Destination Linux Network in this channel, but it's a completely open source project. We were talking about them well before they ever sponsored the network. Bitwarden is an amazing password management tool out there. 
There are other password management tools. I truly believe this is the very best one out there. Go to bitwarden.com slash DLN. Go check them out for yourself. Go do your research yourself. But the key to a password manager is you want to set up two-factor authentication, which means you want to use like a authorization app, like an Authy or something, or Aegis, something like that, uh, where you're doing two-factor authentication. And you want a really, really one password that's super strong that you're going to use for your password manager. It'd be really difficult for them to break. But what a password manager does is if I go to a site and I want to set up a password for that site, a password manager will allow you to generate very complex passwords that you can use and it will save them so you can access them at a later time. So here, what I'm going to do is regenerate. And this is just giving you an example of how Bitwarden works. It has an app that you can have in your browser. Of course, you can have an app on your phone for Bitwarden. You can have the application sitting on your computer. So it, they have an app everywhere. So you can bring your passwords with you everywhere you go, which is really important. But here, I, when I regenerate, when you go into Bitwarden, you'll have options like this. I could choose that I want specialized characters, zero through nine and special characters, or I want lowercase and uppercase, or I want a whole passphrase that's more, um, you know, real actual words to remember, like capsule, fever, playful, and seated with dashes in between. Or I could do this as a type of password itself. And every time I can regenerate different passwords here. So this will give you a password score and estimated time to crack. And here you can see that it will take centuries. But what happens if I lower that to just a very small password, T-E-F-Y-0, right? This is not a dictionary word. You would think this would be kind of difficult to crack, but this is saying less than 10 seconds. So again, a lot of things have to do with the length of password. And you can see we could take that same concept of how we generate a password, just make it longer, and maybe that's too long. And we still have centuries for the current technology to be able to crack a password like that. So this is kind of how Bitwarden works. You'll go to a site, You'll click on generate or create a new login for it and you'll have an option just like this to generate a password and then you save that and that's what you'll use for the site when you fill it out and every time that you go into it and bitwarden also has a pass password testing tool so you could see how strong your password is you could type things in one two three four five six that's very very weak but if i start doing some random numbers and things in there you could see now we can make the password much, much stronger. So if you're using a password or a phrase and you want to check against a database to see if it's strong or how long it would take to crack, uh, you could go to this and I have a link for it in the show notes below. So the Privacy Rights Clearinghouse, I thought had a really nice list. So instead of creating my own, uh, I'll have a link for their website here, but they have a really nice breakdown of rules for creating very complex passwords that will be difficult to crack here. Uh, to give you an example, let's say this site actually had a login and I wanted to create one for it of how Bitwarden works. I could click Bitwarden up here and then I could click new and I could put my username. Of course, it's automatically going to say the site is privacy rights. You can see how easy this is. And let's say my username is DosGeek and I want to generate a password for it. I could go to the generator here and it's automatically going to choose at least 14 length, but I can make that longer. I can make it 22. And then I have a mix of capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and then we can also throw in some special characters there. I could select that and then I could save that. And even though there is no login for this particular website, this gives you an idea of how it looks. And I can go in here and I can copy my password if I'm going to that site to paste it in. Or I could take a look at that password that I set. Now back to Privacy Rights Clearinghouse and some of their rules. Avoid using dictionary words. Why? Because that's essentially how a lot of these brute force hacking tools work is they have a whole dictionary of commonly used words and phrases and things out there that it attempts to use. And they get very, very sophisticated out there. Don't use your personal information, birthdays, social security numbers. People like to use their birthdays and their password all the time. Uh, they'll specifically like to use the year of their birthday. And that can be something that people can access through other means uh, of information gathering metadata that they capture through social media or other things to determine that it's your birthday and try to use that as a password. Avoid common sequences of numbers. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six would be a common sequence. Uh, use special characters because that's going to make it more complex because uh, the hacking tool going through a dictionary and let's say you had your password was password. Very easy, right? Common word, uh, dictionary word that it could find and be able to crack through. But if it's password with a pound and an exclamation mark and some numbers and then some other random digits, that starts to become far more difficult 
for the brute force tool to be able to generate that randomly and be able to get into your passwords. Uh, the other things here that it mentions is make sure characters are a big deal. So the longer the passwords are better than shorter ones. Brute force attack can easily defeat a password less than seven characters. So do not set passwords less than seven characters using the first letter from each word in a sentence, a phrase, a poem or song. If it's for a password you need to remember, like maybe the password you use for your password manager, you're going to make it something really complex. So that's a good tip. Create different passwords for different accounts. Probably the most important thing when we're talking about passwords that you could do. Do not listen. Do not please listen. Use your passwords. So if you create a really complex password, do not use it across all of your sites and services. Because if one of them gets compromised and you've got some really bad company, and this has happened where they have all their users' passwords out there in a TXT file that someone gets, and then you know maybe it's just a password for a gaming site that you use, but you use the same password everywhere. So now, because you use that same password, they have access to your bank, they have access to your social media accounts, they have access to everything. So every site should have a different password. That's where something like Bitwarden comes in to help you accomplish that very, very easily. Consider using a secure password manager. Again, that's what we're talking about here. And if you've already established a password that's not strong enough, change it. So don't be afraid to go in and make changes to your passwords. Now, if you haven't followed these rules, if you've set really weak passwords, it's okay. Just go in there and get that fixed. And so you don't end up having your password on one of these lists here of the most common passwords used and your site won't get compromised. But really a huge shout out to NordPass for generating this. I think this type of data is absolutely fascinating and you could see when it comes to privacy and security, we've got a long way to go if these are still the common passwords using to get the message out that you need to set a stronger password for your accounts out there to help your data from getting compromised. So sorry about my voice, I've been sick, but I wanted to get this video out because I thought it was just so interesting and really timely with a lot of holidays and things. You may be getting into shopping accounts and other stuff and going into your bank more than ever. Make sure that you're changing your passwords to something complex and you use a really good password manager like Bitwarden. Go to bitwarden.com slash DLN if you want to check it out. There are others out there as well, but that's the one that I recommend. A big thanks to my patrons out there, and until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Mm -hmm.